Well, it's time to conclude our study of uh, polysaccharides and carbohydrates in general. And so, polysaccharides, we've uh, discussed briefly, looked at four of those. Uh, most of those are, are a whole bunch of glucoses joined together in some, some way. So one of these was uh, starch. Starch is a bunch of glucoses uh, put together. And, um, and so the subunit of starch is glucose. Um, and there's a question there on your study guide. Uh, what is the most abundant polysaccharide in nature? That's another one that's uh, shown in that picture in your textbook. And that is uh, polysaccharide number uh, one, two, three, four. Number three. It is uh, cellulose, and uh, cellulose is also made of a bunch of glucoses hooked together in a somewhat different way than starch, obviously. And uh, it says, uh, so what's the subunit of this poly polysaccharide? Well, the subunit of both of these is glucose, 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 joined together in some uh, particular way. And so why is cellulose so abundant in nature? That's the question. Well, there's a picture in your book of uh, algae. In that picture, there's a picture of algae. A plant would have worked. And, uh, and so, uh, and so uh, why is that? Well, a plant cell is different than an animal cell. We'll study more about this, but you, I'm sure you already know. And when you look at a plant cell through a microscope, uh, most of the time they look like little boxes. Why is that? because the plant cell has a rigid cell wall and that cell wall is made of cellulose made primarily of cellulose uh, I'll just put made of cellulose but it's uh, at least made primarily of cellulose uh, woody uh, trees and things they have something in addition to cellulose but they're still primarily made of cellulose and so uh, how come cellulose is so abundant in nature? Because there's lots of plants out there, lots of algae too, uh, lots of plants with lots of cells. Every one of those cells has a cell wall made of cellulose, and so that's why cellulose is so abundant in nature. All right, uh, what else? Uh, the last couple questions have to do with uh, how our bodies handle these two uh, substances. Actually, the last question, and uh, you know, we've probably... Uh, had both of these uh, today to eat. I hope you have. The starch comes in lots of things, potatoes and bread and so forth. Uh, cellulose, uh, hopefully you've had some fruit or veggies and, and uh, that'd be a, that's a good source of uh, cellulose. <coughs> How does our body handle these as they pass through the pipeline? You put them in the hatch, whoop, down the pipeline they go, and what does our body do to them as they pass through the pipeline? Let's look at starch first. Starch again is a bunch of glucoses hooked together. And uh, so if you ate some starch today, uh, what's happening to that starch as it moves on through the pipeline? Well, it's being uh, digested, right? What does that mean? It's being taken apart into its glucose subunits. And you've got lots and lots of hungry cells out there that want those glucose subunits. And so when those glucose subunits are taken, are separated from the rest, they're uh, broken down into their individual glucose subunits. They are shipped out through our bloodstream to trillions of hungry cells that need a steady supply of glucose molecules. All right, so starch is digested. Is that what happens to cellulose as it proceeds through the pipeline? No, it is not. It goes into the pipeline of cellulose. It comes out someplace else as cellulose. Cellulose in, cellulose out. Seems like kind of a waste, doesn't it? Actually, it's not, as you probably know. Uh, what is the uh, term, the dietary term for things like cellulose? You know, it's fiber. Should we have a certain amount of fiber in our diet? Well, sure we should. We've all heard that. And uh, some of us have plenty. Some of us maybe, uh, maybe don't have enough. Depends on what you eat. But uh, why is it important to have an adequate amount of fiber in the diet? What does that do for us? Well, yeah. It keeps things moving right along. Why is that important? Well, short term, uh, it helps prevent a, a uh, clogged pipe. Anybody there like a clogged pipe? Mm, not me. I don't like a clogged pipe. I bet you don't either. But long term, it keeps things moving on through. 
and that is uh, one thing that will do for us is greatly decrease the probability of getting a terrible disease that occurs toward the end of the pipeline. What is that called? Colon cancer. Ooh, don't want to get that. That's serious. That is serious stuff. Seriously bad stuff. And how can you greatly decrease the probability of getting colon cancer? Eat your fruit and veggies. Have an adequate amount of fiber. There's other sources as well. But uh, have an adequate amount of fiber in the diet. So, what's the difference and how these, what happens to these two as they pass through the pipeline? Starch is broken down into its individual glucose subunits. Cellulose is not. What is the difference? How come we can digest this one but not this one? It has to do with something that we're going to be talking quite a bit about this semester. Something called enzymes. And uh, right now we're talking about digestive enzymes. There's a whole lot more to enzymes than just digestion. But why can we digest starch and not cellulose? Because we have the enzymes in the pipeline that will take apart starch. We do not have the enzymes in the pipeline that will take apart cellulose. That is the difference. Enzymes for this one, no enzy enzymes for that one. Okie dokie. That concludes our unit on carbohydrates. Onward to lipids.